Hi guys, welcome to Book It List. I am Raji and today we are going to be seeing the review of a book called The Last Queen by Chitra Banerjee Devakaruni. Now this is the story of Jindan Kaur who is the last queen of Punjab before India is taken over by the British. Let me start by showing you how gorgeous the cover design is. So this is the actual painting of Jindan Kaur from 1863 and the painting was done by an English painter called George Raymond and he was specialized in like royalty painting. And I love the hardcover design as well. The thing I realized after finishing this book is how little we know about the women in Indian history and their perspective towards our freedom struggle. Now, generally talking, all we know about uh, Jindan Kaur is that she is after all the daughter of a dog kennel keeper. She is not that literate and she is very promiscuous when it comes to the men in her life and um, she's basically judged her whole life but there is so much depth and emotion that this character contributes and i'm so grateful that chitra banerjee diva karuni has yet again given a powerful voice to an important woman in our history i'm going to give you a little bit summary about the book and then tell you three things i liked about the book and three things that i actually did not like about the book the book has four parts in it the first part is girl where we see Jindan Kaur's childhood where she lives in poverty with her brother, mother and sister whereas the father is actually the dog kennel keeper of Punjab. You know, he works uh, for Ranjit Singh who is the king of Punjab and uh, so from childhood Jindan Kaur hears a lot about the king, how majestic he is, how handsome and brave he is and she really likes the king but anyway she cannot really dream of any future with him because she is a very poor her family doesn't even have food to eat but she loves studying like that is her major goal she loves studying she's very geeky and i love to uh, like read those uh, so yes that is how much encapsulates the first chapter the second chapter is called the bride where we see Ranjit Singh, the king of Punjab that I just told you and Jindan Kaur meeting, falling in love and getting married. Um, anyway, so Ranjit Singh has around 20 wives in his lifetime and it is said that he loves Jindan Kaur so much that he did not marry after her. Like she was the last queen and hence the title. The third part is called the queen and it's my favorite part in the book. So we see that the king of Punjab dies due to old age and sickness and the throne is just up for grabs because he has 20 wives and so many options like uh, sons. So it becomes very gore and violent and so much political drama and I loved it. There is so much angst and betrayal and backstabbing and you know the ministers are getting murdered left, right and centre and so many family members die all for a throne. So while this is happening, the British obviously see this and seek this as an opportunity to take over the administration of Punjab and as a reader, you don't know like which character is trustworthy and which character is a spy, you know, uh, for the British or like the other queens, ministers and sons and it was amazing to read. And obviously Jindan Kaur did not grow up with the etiquette of a queen. So she's very naive and innocent and she also doesn't know whom to trust, just like the readers. Jindan Kaur's worst fear becomes true when her son Dulip Singh becomes the king of Punjab when he is just five years old. Not gonna lie, I found it really cute when Dulip Singh, um, you know, was trying to be like a mature adult and king when he was just five years old. But the cuteness lasted like for one chapter after which the administrative turmoil began and um, 
we see that Jindan Kaur is trying to be like a lioness to her cub. She's so protective of her son. She uh, removes her veil, which is never supposed to be done according to like the culture of India in olden days. But yes, she becomes like this fearless woman, which was beautiful to read because she has to be like a strong woman in order to keep her son alive. Part four of this book is called The Rebel, in which we see the throne of Punjab being taken away from Dulip Singh when he was around like seven or eight years old due to treachery. And then the British just kidnapped Dulip Singh to England under the pretense of adoption because they state that Chindan Kaur, his mother, is a mad woman and uh, they imprisonate her and kidnap Dulip Singh to uh, London. So yes, that is what the last part consists of and we see the, the love of a mother in this chapter. You know, Jindan Kaur just does not give up. She is such a rebel. Uh, in, uh, her love for Punjab is almost as equal to her love for Dulip Singh, her son. And uh, we see her traveling from Lahore uh, to Kathmandu and Jammu and Kashmir and Nepal in search of her son. And she finally gets to know that uh, uh, he is in uh, England. And uh, yeah, like after like 14 or 15 years, they meet and you really need to read what happens in like during the last because I cried a little bit. It was just not at all acceptable to me. Uh, Dulip Singh actually forgets his culture. Like his father Ranjit Singh is the share of Punjab. Like he's the lion of Punjab or that's what people call him. To see that the son of such a great, great king is now just stripped of all the heritage and all the money, the position, even the Kohinoor diamond uh, is taken away from him and he does not understand all this. He thinks that British are like good people because uh, obviously British adopted him and he's been you know, growing up there. So I felt very angry and patriotic and you really need to see the ending of the book because it is a real story as you know. And this should not have happened. This is so unfair. But yes, it happened. And I'm glad that Chitra Banerjee Diva Karuni wrote this story. So now let's move on to the three things that I liked in the book and three things that I did not like in the book. The first thing that I absolutely adored in this book is the prose and the way Chitra Banerjee Diva Karuni has written the book. Now, when I saw the cover and when I read the blurb, I thought that this was going to sound like a biography and I don't really like biographies but I picked it up because of this author and my favoritism towards her like she's my favorite and the way the book is written wow uh, we see how uh, the buildings and the monuments and the palace of Lahore is built the intricate designs the the uh, type of uh, colors and textures and marbles they use like really history of India like who would write like this obviously Chitra Banerjee Divakarni it is not just the monuments of Lahore we see how the kings and queens dress themselves like the the type of silk they use the the color of their clothes and the meaning behind it we see the type of uh, food that they like to eat uh, you know the lahore uh, punjabi thali i was hungry while reading this book too and uh, the language the the songs the music they like to hear and uh, i actually i got very drawn towards the punjabi culture after reading this book because uh, I googled everything that is uh, written in the book, the monuments, the designs, everything. It's so apt, like there is no, um, you know, redirection from the originality of Indian culture. So, yes, that's my first thing uh, in the book that I love. My second favorite thing in this book is this character called Mangala, who is Jindan Kaur's favorite maid. 
Now, this character is very funny, whimsical, brave, intelligent, feminist, and she just speaks her mind. She is not afraid to tell even Jin then when she is wrong. Like, actually, she might even be like a fictitious character, but the way it is written is amazing. And uh, Mangla is this type of friend that everyone needs to have in their life. So yes, she was my favorite. My third favorite thing in this book is how I could revisit the history of India through the story. Uh, I mean, it's been years and years since school, I think, uh, that I sat down and read about the freedom struggle of India. Like, uh, I remember I used to feel so proud and connected and patriotic towards our freedom fighters. And um, this story gave me a chance uh, to reconnect with that feeling of uh, patriotism and I love it. My favorite freedom fighter is Mr. Bhagat Singh and after reading this book, I think she is my second favorite freedom fighter ever. So that is how good the book is. So I really request that you do give this one a try. Now let's move on to the three things that I actually didn't like about the book. The first thing that I didn't like in this book is Dalip Singh's character. He is the son of Jindan Kaur and um, I cannot, I could not stop judging him. Uh, even though he has been through a lot in his life and even though he probably has his reasons of why he is the way he is, I just couldn't stop judging him. Um, so he is kidnapped. To London and raised there as an Englishman basically the way he talks the way he dresses he even uh, wants to marry like an English girl uh, so after uh, 17 no, 14 years uh, of separation he meets his mother Jindan Kaur but still calls his England parents as Ma and Pa and this really pains Jindan so much like he has forgotten how to be an Indian. He is scared of the attention that he is uh, getting from Indian people because the Punjabi people still love, uh, you know, uh, Dalip Singh and uh, he, they call him the share of Punjab, just like they, they still see him as his father. But Dalip Singh is very scared of the attention he is getting and he really doesn't like India much. He's not patriotic at all. And he likes the Queen of England. <sighs> okay, so he, he even converts into Christianity and stops following his Sikh religion. Basically, everything that makes him an Indian is gone. And I probably wouldn't judge him this much if it was just me. But since we are reading this book from the perspective of Jindan Kaur, it pains me to see how much pain uh, Jindan has endured throughout the story just to get to her son, who is not even an Indian anymore. She's, she really is very uh, affected by how her son uh, doesn't really value what he is. And, uh, but then he does have a redemption and a beautiful character arc. I think you should uh, read the ending. It was really amazing. The second thing that I didn't like in this book is that the first two chapters are very slow paced and suddenly the third and fourth chapter are like the pace just picked up and it became very fast. Um, so the first two chapters we see a lot of character uh, development and world building. It was very slow and beautiful. And the third and the fourth chapter uh, chapters had a lot of battles and betrayal and it was very fast paced, like so much action going on there. And that was also beautiful. But as a reader, it was a little bit difficult for me to like switch paces. But um, yeah, that's one thing. And there are so many characters coming in and out of the story that uh, sometimes I just got confused who is who. But luckily, Chitra Banerjee Divakaruni has also given the list of ma major characters, which goes for about two pages. So if you ever get confused in the middle of a story, you can just flip pages 
and uh, see who it is. The last thing that I didn't like in this book is that there is a lot of instances when sati happens. If you don't know what sati is, it is an ancient practice which used to happen in India and uh, many places around the world where a woman, uh, a wife jumps into the funeral uh, fire of her husband when he dies. So this practice uh, used to denote that a, a woman's life is useless after the death of her husband. Um, and I know that Chitra Banerjee Divakarni uh, is just sticking to the original script, the original history of India, but it disturbed me so much uh, when I read that Jindan Kaur's best friend in the palace has to die because her husband is dead now and uh, she takes in a lot of opium so that she doesn't feel her body burning. She just walks blindly into the fire and Jindan Kaur is just sobbing and even I was sobbing. <sighs> what I can't even talk normally because it angers me so much that the people uh, who are watching this sati happening is, is not affected by this. You know, they, uh, they fold their hands like this and praise the ladies who are willing to burn with their husband's dead body. And it really angers me. I just, uh, I couldn't take it uh, because uh, you know that Ranjit Singh had around 20 wives. So how many women has to die when he dies? But thankfully, Jindan Kaur decides not to die and she becomes a queen and the rebel in the last two chapters. So I love that. But um, it just pains me and affects me so much when I read that women had to go through this, through this at some point in history. And uh, yeah. So that is my review on The Last Queen by Chitra Banerjee Divakaruni. Now, even though there were a they were like tiny little things that I didn't like in this book because I decided to be a little nitpicky about it. I have given this book 5 on 5 stars on Goodread rating uh, because it is my favorite author. I love this book. I love Chitra Banerjee so much and I can't wait to you know read more books about her. Uh, and I love Jindan Kaur so much. I really think you should read this book. Um, maybe not for a beginner because you really need to know the basics of Indian history in order to uh, read this book a little, uh, you know, more intriguingly. Uh, and there are a lot of other uh, freedom fighter characters like we see Rani Lakshmi Bai too but they are all like passing characters and it was beautiful to see uh, the Indian freedom struggle from Jindan's point of view so yes uh, that's it for today I hope you liked it if you did please like share and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I post a new video I'll see you guys next week bye